seven. Six yeah, he Eagles is the wins. sixth god. That is absolutely true. <laughs> we could make it seven today, which would right. be insane. Like, that, that would, would be, be ridiculous. Unheard of. Yeah, Record absolutely. Breaking. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so it looks like record. we have the Fates Collide Mew. I love this card. It yes. allows you to use one of your other attacks. Uh, it's a one prize attacker, so you can use Drampa's attack with it. It's kind of cool. Uh, versus this Lele start from Michael. Yeah, um, Lele, not really the Pokemon you want to start with. Nine times out of ten, yeah, you don't really want to start with it. Yeah, but they do play three, so that, that's a little bit of a high chance. Absolutely. And we do see also that one Acerola. So we talked about it earlier in the other two matches. Acerola is one of the best cards, I think, to picking up those Lele's and getting... Definitely. I mean, it allows you to get use out of a card, which um, otherwise you wouldn't be able to use Absolutely. for its effect the whole entire game. Absolutely. So that, that's, that potential is always there, for sure. So and we see Pram... got his first deck search. Yeah, yeah, of course. For uh, players who aren't super familiar with the game, usually your first deck search, you're going to look through four or five, maybe six times. Just to figure out what's prized, because in the beginning of the game, we put out those six prizes. Kind of like, you know, you don't know what may or may not be in your deck. And if you only play, like, one copy of a card, you want to make sure it's there. And that's the mark of a really good player, right? Always checking meticulously Absolutely. for those prizes, because it's going to be crucial, especially in a game like this, where, like, where it's a 60 like card mirror. Yeah. 60 card yeah, mirror. absolutely. So all of those cards are going to be very valuable. Absolutely. I feel like... They probably haven't tested this matchup before. So I, I'm sure it's it's new to them as well as it is to us. It's going to be interesting to see. Both of which, like, these two players are phenomenal. They know how to play and the lines that they need to make in order to win. So we'll, we'll see how they, how they do here. We see an Ultra Ball from Azul. I'm expecting Lele for Bridget. Discarding that, I think that's an N that he discarded, and a Trash Lunch Gardevoir. In Expanded, I'm sure you guys have mentioned this several times, but since I'm, I'm just getting yeah, yeah, here absolutely. behind the desk, um, VS Seeker's back. Yep, <laughs> so, one of the biggest cards. Yes, yep. that's going to be huge, a huge difference between... It allows you to battle compressor those supporters, the like one-off supporters that you can right. play. So actually in standard now, it's it's considered not a good idea to just toss your supporters and discard. Correct. But in expanded, it is a good play. It's kind of like it'll go ahead and do it. To go back and get it later. Yeah, absolutely. With the I love it. It's such a good play. Definitely. And it's so standard now. That is now the standard play. Lele for Bridget discarding supporters. <laughs> Got a tough choice about what to get, but he's also going to go for the Bridget, I think. So, basically an identical setup from them both. Right, absolutely. Very strong turn ones. I agree. I believe Azul's probably going to weigh out some options, see what's the best line here. Um, obviously, figuring out how many Trubbish are prized, how many Garbodors are prized, and what lines he can actually take here. And both of them seem to find for a double Trubbish setup, they got they both have two Trubbish, absolutely, and a Lele. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and, and that two. Mew, yeah, yeah, and the Mew, yeah. But we see the first Gar or the first Drampa come down. That card is kind of really good. It hits really good numbers. Big Wheel GX allows you to set up. A Righteous Edge is even good in this matchup with those special energies. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they play. Wait to see how this plays. Yeah, out. absolutely. And we see a pass. All right. Just kind of getting everything set up, getting ready to go, taking the first couple turns of the game to make sure their board state is sustainable, so that absolutely. they don't run into problems later on with end. Absolutely. And here comes the first first end of the game. And so it's hard to talk about this matchup because. Right now, there's no clear advantage for either oh, player. Oh, yeah, of so course. So that's what's super interesting about yep. it as well. It's not like, oh, this deck is favored over the other. Right. It's, so it's It really comes game. down to, yeah, it comes down to whoever plays better, whoever draws better. Exactly. Which is my kind of matchup to watch, actually. Definitely. It's one of the, my favorites. For sure. Skill and tenseful matchups. <laughs> Always the best. So the um, rainbow energy on the 
Sapulele there from Pramawat. That's going to set up for his Drampa when he eventually finds it. Absolutely. Um, to do more damage with Berserk. Berserk's interesting. You're wanting to hurt your own Pokemon in order to do more damage. It seems ludicrous to me, but obviously it, it's good here. They're both 2 0 -oh here, so. And yeah, it looks like a pass. Sometimes I'm... it can be a little hard to pull off to yeah. get damage on your own Pokemon. Absolutely. That's why the rainbow is such a good attachment. So that, that's all ready to go. But the only thing is he's, he's missing the crucial piece, the Drampa. The Drampa, but... right. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, if he ever does find that. And Mew can even copy Berserk. Absolutely. So That's think, why the card is so yeah. like versatile in this matchup. It can do that. It can also, I believe it can trash a lanch. Right. I'm pretty sure it can also trash a lanch. So. so we're seeing Ultra Ball from Azul here. Looks like a Getsus and a trash a lanch, I believe. I see, I see the Getsus. I have a feeling you don't really want to attack with Trash and Lanch in this format, or in this deck, like this setup, I guess, because they're both throwing away their Trash and Lanch Garbodors. I wonder if that's, like, the play here. I'm I'm sure they probably probably have some idea, right, how to play this matchup. <laughs> they have to have some idea. I'm sure they have a game plan in mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it they do. it will reveal itself to us in due time. Right, yeah, 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 time. absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I, they definitely want to be leading with Mew here for the most part. And there's the first oh, knockout. Man. There it that is. is yeah. That is crucial from Azul, actually. I love uh, Tapu Lele because you can do that. You yes. can attach a DCE and just smack oh, things. God. Tapu Lele is so, so good. Oh, absolutely. It is just so good. Not only does it allow you to search for a supporter, right. but it's a decent attacker. Oh, absolutely. In for, any situation. For an easy double colorless, yeah. that's all it takes. Right. For an easy situation. I love it. It's just an amazing card. It is. That's why it's kind of um, mostly replaced Shaman, which which used to be the card to play, <laughs> the right? The card. <laughs> and it's just that's how good Tapu the card is. is. Yep. Oh, another good card. Teammates allows you if you your opponent took a knockout last turn, you can search your deck for two cards and add them to your hand. Any two cards. Yeah, so Pram's going to take advantage of Azul taking the first knockout to play that teammates and just kind of get whatever he wants out of the deck. Absolutely. And set himself up for any possible situation that he sees that says he's going to come up for him. Maybe he'll grab that Drampa, maybe an energy that he needs to attach. Looks like he's eyeing up an Ultra Ball maybe yeah, in his hand. Yeah, I see hand. he has a double colorless in his hand as well. Awesome. The other chat around the shot, yeah, let's do that. I'm just going to kind of sit with Kingdra with my shoulder. I am interested to know kind of why they discarded the Trash Lanch Garbodors because they do only play one copy of the other Garbodor and there's also not too many abilities in this deck. Right. I mean, you have Mew, yeah. right? But I believe that, that and Lele. Lele. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, it's not a heavy ability-based deck. Correct. So. Oh, now this, this is, is interesting. So with the Dimension Valley, the Mew can now use Berserk for right. just the double colorless. That's great synergy. Wow. I didn't even see that coming. And Garbodor can use Trash Lanch for free. Right? Uh, no. no. Unfortunately, the. Is it basics only? It's only for yes. the, the colorless energy. Not for psychic Pokemon. Right. That would be really cool. That would be really cool. <laughs> that would be I was insane. Like, I, first, for a second, I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> that, yeah, that makes Garbodor really yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would have been too much synergy. I yeah, it would have been like. It would have broken. I would have left. Like yeah, I would have been like, I'm done. I'm not. I'm not commentating this anymore. <laughs> maybe, maybe Mew's the way you win this matchup because both of them seem to be going just for the yeah, Mew. Mew's a crucial piece for sure. Interesting. Kind of just like exchanging small knockouts right now, attaching one energy per turn, kind of like taking a slow. I think like what both players want to do is take out the others like key component. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Absolutely. We saw the Pram go for the knockout on the Mew because it had the energy attachment. Correct. They want to be ahead in resources. Correct. Over the other person. They want to make sure that every attachment that they're making sticks. Yes. And as much as they can do that is going to be a winning play for them, basically. Because every attachment is very crucial in a deck with 
no energy acceleration. Right, and you're only playing four Psychic, three Rainbow, and four DCEs, and your Dramp is using three energy to attack, it gets kind of rough. Ooh, res Rescue Stretch is a good card. Putting back Trash Lanch, Oracorio, and a Lele. All right. That card seems really fun. It's just so versatile. It you is. need a Lele right now? Grab a Lele. Yes. You need to shuffle cards back so you don't deck out? Shuffle cards back in. It's a super odd plus a buddy buddy rescue. A buddy buddy, yeah. Where <laughs> your no opponent drawback. doesn't have to do it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All in one card. They know what they're doing over there at Pokemon. They know. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's interesting here is they both play this tool drop. Trubbish, which does, I believe, 20 times the amount of tools attached to all of your Pokemon. Yes. That card could come into play here. Gosh. I miss uh, the tool drop deck. Yeah? <laughs> I actually that was saw... A fun deck to play. I walked around and looked at a couple decks. There are a couple that are actually being played. It's yeah, kind of crazy. Surprised. They're 2-0. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I think the deck is underrated. Yeah, sure, I agree. If I was playing, that'd be one of my top Yeah, that, that'd probably sure. be one of mine as well. So good. Just massive amounts of damage from a yeah. tiny little trubbish. Yeah, from a, a 70 and hit point with trubbish. Two, they don't even take a prize. Yeah, they never take a prize. Yeah, that's a good deck. Definitely. But that's not what we're seeing here. Yeah, so. well, <laughs> it we would digress. be cool. We, <laughs> we do see Pramalot seems to be going for that trash Lanch. He put down that choice band. Maybe he's thinking for like a Guzma next turn or setting himself setting up for up. one be setting up for a Guzma. I wish we had an indicator to see how many items were in each other's uh, discard, yeah. but... Kind of kind of an impossibility there. Right. In a, in a perfect world, though. In a perfect we world, know. we would have we everything. Would everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'd be all-knowing. We would know the prizes. We would yeah, we would discard. be... Well, <laughs> then they would probably know that, too, and then the game would be unfair, so... No, like the Pokemon streams where they have the clear table. Oh, yeah, we need those, oh, yeah. We have to spend money for those, though. <laughs> We're balling on a budget. All right, all right. Next time. <laughs> Next time, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so... We have two Trubbishes facing off. I love it. It's like tool drop on tool drop crime. I like it. <laughs> it's I think we'll cool. see anyone actually use tool drop this game. I mean, Framwata has two tools on the board, and Dimension Valley is... Up. Yeah, so he could do tool it here. Drop is potentially knocking out a tool drop, right. which he does. Look yeah. at that. So yeah, there, we saw the place. <laughs> we saw the play. We see the lines. I love it. So yes. As long as we see the lines, that's what matters, right? Yes. So we said you guys weren't getting to see tool drop today, but here we are. We, we saw it. Made all. us liars. <laughs> Goodness. I love the variety of, of attacks being used in this deck. Yeah, that's There's the cool thing. So many options. There's, you can attack with what, like six different things in this so deck? You have Necrozma, Drampas, Leles, and that everything kind of attacks. Situational like attacks mm -hmm. is kind of like the mark of a difficult deck that needs to be piloted by someone. Who's a really, skillful player. Yeah, yeah exactly, absolutely. Because they're going to get in so many different situations that each attack is not going to be good. It's not like Volcanion, who has one, one thing, attack. One attack. Yeah. You, you, you volcanic heat things, every time, you know? right. You need or, to be strategic about which attack. Right, and how things. each attack goes with each situation exactly. kind of thing. Yeah, it's cool. I like it. A lot of difficult choices to be made, though. And that's why I like that these two players are playing this exact deck, because they are two phenomenal players. Like, they're known for how good they are. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. So they are both tied in prizes right now. Absolutely. Oh, does Azul have four or three there? I'm not sure. It looks I, like it three. It looks to me like three. But it could be hidden four. I'm not sure. It's tough to see with the blue on the Yeah, blue. with the blue on blue, yeah. Blue on blue Azul. What? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. Wow. Next level. <laughs> yeah, Mind that's, blown. That's how I think. I'm sorry. Wow. I, didn't even, I didn't even make that connection. I'm sorry. Just overthink so that's everything. Here from Azul for so many cards. Ten cards. Ten cards. That's like he just used a GX. Yeah, like he just <laughs> used Drampa GX. Big wheel. That's such a good card. That's what I love about this expanded format is you can play cards like that and get maximum value like that. 
It has I a love nostalgia it. factor too. Oh, it really does. I remember the first Nats I ever played at. That card was really good because everyone was playing Skyfield Ray. Oh, so you yeah. could draw like 16 cards off of it. It was pretty cool. Nice. So that's a dangerous hand size for Azul to be at. Um, if you're Pramawa, yeah. you got to be worried about that. You absolutely have to find an N or... Yes. You're going to be in some trouble. Yeah, absolutely. It attaches to the Mew on the bench. Possibly coming up this turn. Oh, look at that. There are four items, four tools attached to, or five tools, I'm sorry. That's 200 damage to that Trubbish. Wow. Wow. I mean, anyway, wow is correct. It, that's a knockout. So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. Oh, this now, is so now much I see fun. Azul's now down to three. Okay, it yeah, now it's down to three, yeah. This is so cool to see. Trubbish on Trubbish crime. I love it. It's like all these tiny little psychic basics kind of just in it out. Yeah. Doing 200 damage. Just, you know. Casually. <laughs> casually casually just doing 200 damage. So what can Pramwa do except for, you know, try to return the, the trade? It's I think that's what he'll have to do. Yeah. And that's why he brought up this Tapu Lele, not just because it has the float stone, but because he knows it's going to be a phenomenal attacker here. Yeah. He's got a field blower, two of these choice fans. I think that's a good choice. I also like it as well. Yeah, I believe. Because you want to keep that Dimension Valley in play. And you he, want to. The float stones aren't too. Like, he's not going to be going for the game plan of Guzma stalling. So right. So he doesn't really care about those float stones. It seems like. Right now, where the board state is, if you're not taking a knockout a turn, you you're kind of losing. Yeah, you're going to fall behind. Yeah. And Pram's already in a in the driver's seat because he took the first prize. Yeah. So it's kind of like you have to take a, a prize a turn, it yeah. seems like. That's the way a lot of these small basic decks work. Right. Absolutely. They're just so vulnerable and easy to KO. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And maybe they already knew the game plan going in. Maybe that's, they know, obviously they know more than us because yep. they're playing the decks. But maybe that's why Azul went for discarding his trash Trashalanche garbs. He and doesn't even need them because he can actually just take the knockouts with Trubbish for right, the most part. Right, exactly. Interesting. I like the methodical play that both these players are using here. So we, we saw them both bench Drampa, but neither one has used Drampa, really been yeah. used. I believe one Mew copied berserk but other than that that card hasn't really been used i also like how pram used his tapu lele to attack instead of his trash lanch garbador he's kind of like saving it yes. for later for like a like an end game strategy i yeah. like it yeah garbador trash lanch is a great sweeper oh absolutely and it's also more difficult for azul to knock out this lele absolutely so that's why he kind of hopes that he has to take the two-hit KO on it. Because, of course, again, we, we're not sure exactly the item count in the discard, so right. we don't really know if Azul is capable of knocking out this Lele in one shot. With a trash it's lance, right. It's going to be difficult, though, because Pram did field blower away that choice the band. choice man yeah. on it. to make like So that makes me think he can't get the knockout right now, right. as it is. Um, and Lele, of course, doesn't have weakness, right. even though it's a psychic type. So you have to do that full, full You have to do damage. 170 <laughs> right. points of damage. And that, that's kind of tough to get to. I mean, Trash Lanch, the items do stack up. Absolutely. But it's still... Absolutely. And both players have been judicious about how many they discard so far. Absolutely. I wonder if this Garbotoxin is going to come into play, like, actually matter. Because Azul does have it up now. Mm -hmm. It's a little late in the game, and yes. Pram's bench is oh, full, and there's no Mew, so it doesn't seem to be affecting. Yeah, I don't right think now. it's going to be. Maybe later when like a Lele needs to go down or something, but I don't think other than that. All right, so now we see Grandpa Drampa coming up here for yep. the first time. That Righteous Edge attack doing 20 damage and discarding a special energy is crucial. Like I was saying earlier, the deck plays seven special energies. And if that's all they see, if that's all Kramalot sees, he could be in a lot of trouble here. 
Yeah, he he does have the flow stone, so he can easily retreat this Lele, but Absolutely. losing the DC does hurt a bit. He now has to find some other way to attack. Absolutely. It's kind of like a war of attrition. You have to figure out what's the best route to do it without losing too many resources, I guess. But this tool drop is going to do way too right. much damage. Yeah. And Azul's going to go it. ahead and just yeah. pack it up. That's it for game one there. Absolutely. So Ram is going to take game one. Absolutely. And yeah, that was a fairly fast game. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we have about 30 minutes left, I believe, mm -hmm. for uh, game two, which should be enough time for game two and game three. I'm not sure. Um, it's going to be rough for Azul. They both knew what they had to do. They both played to their outs. Uh, Ram was just, you know, ahead in prizes. Right. So do you think that it's more advantageous to go first or second in this particular matchup? Because generally the default option is to go first. Right. But it's possible to get a turn one knockout on a Mew or a Trubbish uh, with Tool Drop. Or right, absolutely. Mew. So that can put you ahead in that prize trade, like we were talking about. Correct. I believe Azul went first that game, and I believe Pram took the first knockout, right. putting him ahead in the prize trade. So maybe it's better to go second, I guess. Maybe. I mean, we'll definitely see. We'll see if there's a uh, maybe like a maybe. Azul's like, yeah, I'll just go second. He like chooses to go second. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Definitely. And I, because I know in the old Night March matchup. Mm -hmm. Oh it, yeah. Oftentimes you would choose to go second. You always want to go second because you're like, I can attack first turn. Right. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So, definitely. But that was a quick game, and it, it seemed very back and forth. Oh yeah. Both players. Neither one really had anything. Like any a huge advantage. Draw, yeah, or, yeah. Or or dead draws. That's yeah, very true. Yeah. Either one. They seem to have exactly what they needed, almost nine times out of ten. Dex looks smooth. Yeah, working like a... Like a really well-oiled machine. I was going to yeah, say that. Yeah, absolutely. That was what I was thinking. <laughs> actually. And then I was like, should I say that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Azul's going for his first deck search. Probably going to take him a minute or so, you know. How the first deck search usually goes, especially because he's down a game, so he he really needs to make sure that he needs has to everything. Be careful about yeah. this if he's going to win this game, but he did choose to go first, so. So I guess that that answers that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this Mimikyu is a, a little vulnerable here. I like Mimikyu. Mimikyu seems kind of cool. It's basically Mew, but you're copying your opponent's attacks, so that's kind of cool. So many tricks. In this like deck. little, yeah, like little <laughs> little intricacies that you yeah. can have. A lot of copying going on. Yeah, they don't even use their own attacks. No, no they, I'm just kidding. They don't need to. <laughs> That's funny. They don't need to. And it's extra funny because normally they wouldn't be facing a mirror, so they would be copying other things. Right, like right, right, right. <laughs> different attacks. And also, I'm pretty sure this deck is like supposed to necrozma every game. But in this matchup, I think you just it's don't do it. You just can't bad. do it. Yeah, it's just yeah, you don't do it. Not that many EXs and GXs. It's like, you need to take out the energy and the attackers. Yeah, that's what it seems like, right? I wonder if uh, if there's a lot of people playing this exact 60 or if it's just these two. Because I know a lot of players like to like share their lists sometimes, mm -hmm. like when they think they have the good play to their friends. Right. So mm -hmm. I wonder if there's more people playing this there's deck. There's probably a couple more of these floating yeah, around. Yeah, I'm sure. pretty sure there is. Because it seems like whoever came up with the original list has, like, the insight into the game, it seems like. This deck seems really fun. Like, a lot of intricacies to it. I like it. And very powerful. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a reason why, I mean, 2-0 early in the day, but these two players, if this will be their probably their one loss, I think. Like, their one loss is going to be to either Michael Bramawat or Azul, you know? Like, it's... Yeah. It's unfortunate that they honestly had to deal with this the so early, so early. Yeah. yeah, so early in the day. Puts them kind of on the back foot for the rest of the day. But both of them will still have an excellent chance at making day two. The 2-0 start from the both of them is very is strong. Is great, yeah, absolutely. Putting them in a great spot. Even taking a loss here is not the end of the world. Right, absolutely. Certainly not the end of the day for them. Right. <laughs> a long oh yeah, it'll be a long one. Yeah, it'll be a long day. Nine rounds. I'm I'm excited. Too. Yeah, great. Absolutely. And we did see that bridge at turn one. Seems like that's just the thing to do, you know? Yeah. Definitely the ideal turn one, and it's 
happening again. This is what, like, Both probably players. the sixth game in a row that that's happened? Yeah. <laughs> and very, actually, almost identical again to the same start. Drampa, Drampa, mm -hmm. Double Trubbish, and a Lele. And a DCE. Yep, and a DCE Both down. <laughs> Mimic you on Azul's side, but... See, I would like to see Azul maybe Guzma up the Drampa, but maybe that's a misplay. I don't know. Kind of hit into it. Yeah, like Righteous Edge, righteous knock off the edge, DCE. Yeah. yeah. But no, we'll just see a Sycamore, yeah. Unfortunate. He possibly could have Ultra Ball for a Lele to do that play, but he probably didn't want to. Yeah, kind of, overextend, yeah, kind of. Leave to make a suboptimal no play. Right, absolutely. I do think that would have been clutch. Yeah, I think it would have been cool. Like it, would, it definitely would have been a cool play. Let's see here. I just realized how many like tools this deck actually plays. Three float stones, four choice bands. Like that's a lot. Like, yes. We just saw Azula drop three of them. Right in, in, in a row. Yeah, that's crazy. But that's kind of maybe not that good for him because. It leaves those tools open to tool being discarded. Well, tool drop and being discarded by, by field, field blowers. Blower That's also before true. Before he gets to use their effect. Like, to actually use them, yeah. right. Absolutely, I you, agree. You never really want to drop a bunch of tools without like getting an advantage him. on them. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. He wants that plus 30 damage at some point, and he might not get to use them. But he does have two more choices. Right, absolutely. <laughs> so. uh, we do see Pram discard a DCE to... Retreat and then goes straight for that big wheel GX. So we gather his hand was less than satisfactory. I'm gonna say probably nine yeah. times out of ten that hand was not good. <laughs> yeah. So drawing ten stuff. cards off of this attack seems pretty good to me. Now if Azul could find an N, that's probably his like main concern and right now. N and a waiter treat that Lele and knock off that DCE. That DCE, yeah. That and would that's... be really good. I think that's what Azul definitely is looking for this turn. Can't see if he has an end in hand. Can't he's tell. Just going crazy <laughs> he just with that hand. shuffles his hand yeah. ridiculously. But no, to each his own. Every time I see Azul on stream, he's just like flipping his cards so fast. Absolutely. Maybe that's a key to being a good player. Maybe you just got to be really fast with card shuffling. Possibly. They do all seem to. Yeah, they all seem to do it, right? Yeah. I do see a VS Seeker. Maybe there might be an N in Azul's discard, but I'm not sure. I honestly don't know. He's going to put down that Dimension Valley, but he's thinking about it because Dimension Valley, of course, also helps out his opponent. Absolutely. But, but then again, that's also three dead yes. cards in Pramalot's deck because that's the only stadium these two decks play. Exactly what I was going to say yeah, as well. Absolutely. So in a way, it's good to put down the first stadium. And right. It also has a negative side, though. Absolutely. And then there's the end, like I was saying, absolutely. I think it's kind of like a necessary thing. Like, you see your opponent big wheel, you kind of have to do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't want, especially this early in the game, all those cards. Oh, absolutely. Such a good setup. Absolutely. That's kind of the downside of the big wheel GX and the algorithm GX from Metagross. Mm -hmm. is they're just begging for Please end me. Yeah, basically is what it is. Yeah. And they don't have an immediate effect. Right. But they also, if you get to keep those Yeah, hands, if it sticks, yeah, your hands. Huge. Yeah, exactly. You basically set up everything that you need at high that risk, point. High risk, high reward. Basically is what it is, yeah. I wonder how afraid Azul is to retreat this Lele to Righteous Edge, knowing that Pram can do the exact same thing back if he gets an energy. He already has one in the discard, and with this one discarded as well... That's, yeah, that's only two DCEs left in deck, yeah. It's difficult for him to return the favor. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Oh, so he just goes for the energy drive. I like it. Yeah, might as well not waste that DC. Since he didn't hit the float stone, I'm sure he doesn't really, like we said, this game's going to be about managing resources. Absolutely. So he doesn't want that DCE to go to waste just to retreat that Lele, so he might as well get some damage out of it. Absolutely. And this Drampa, of course, is not going to knock it out, so. No, it's not. Huh. 
Oh, there was a Lysander play. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I was so confused. Looked away <laughs> I looked second. away for just a second. Active uh, change. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. Oh, but interesting that there's they're playing a split between one Lysander and one Guzman this day. That is interesting. I like that. And then there's the Righteous Edge, like I was saying. Okay. Interesting. I like this this line of play. It's a good play. Yeah. But then again, it sets up Pramwat's also getting Righteous Edged back. So that's kind of like the game you play. It's like yeah. at that point, Azul is three. Hit KOing this Drample though, and that's not particularly Yeah, good that doesn't seem either. good. So I think that Pramawat's fine if Azul just righteous edges this. I agree. I think he wouldn't mind too much. But Azul wants to get the knockout. Yeah. Someone's got to start taking prizes. There needs to be prizes taken <laughs> soon. Yeah, I agree. A little bit different the way this is playing out from the last game where they kind of like traded small basics. And now Back we and have, forth, yeah. Now we have these heavy hitters going up, so that illustrates the versatility of the deck, mm -hmm. like we were saying. Computer search. Ooh, the, I think this is the first first A spec we've seen of this mm -hmm. match. I think. Oh, I miss A specs. Yeah, I do too. I wish they would do them, just not as powerful. Mm -hmm. Give us something like that, like a one of yeah. that's not a GX attack. The boost in consistency from computer search is just so. Yeah. It gets you good. whatever you need whenever <laughs> you need it. It's it's nuts. It's, it's pretty much usually considered the best ace spec. Oh, we see an ace roll up. Oh, Azul. I love the card. That That's is such a clutch play. I love it. It's so good. That card makes me it's so happy. So it makes me so happy. Like, think about AZ. Yeah, it's, 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 it's AZ a better AZ. Yeah, it's a better AZ. Yeah, I and agree. AZ was really good. Yeah, so. everyone played it. At least one of. Yep. And then he attaches a psychic. Is that a psychic or a DC? A, he's got a psychic and a DC. Okay, I can't really. tell if that top one was a psychic yep. or not. Yep. Looks so like maybe one of the knockout. older ones. Gonna take the knockout on Trampa. I love it. This is a good Go play. Go up by two prizes. Taking the lead right now. Yeah, absolutely. In game two. We gotta make sure we're not playing too many items on both sides because Trash Lunch is still prominent. Still it's a, a card. It's always looming in the background. Yep. It's always threatening. So there's a lot of checking of items. Yeah, always. Always have to. How many have, have I played? How many has he played? Right, absolutely. It makes it scary to play like a VS Seeker. Like yeah. you're like, oh, if I play this VS Seeker, it's gonna put me right at the limit, you know? A VS Seeker for Sycamore here. And Drampa's back on the bench after being rescue stretchered. Also a really good play. I like that card a lot. Like, man, the versatility of this deck with versatile, versatile cards seems really cool. a lot of different synergies happening. Absolutely. So he wants either an energy to attack with this Mew or a way to retreat. Absolutely. And I, I can't see his hand. I'm not sure if he's found either of those things, to be honest. If he was to get an energy, oh, he, has think a float he, would, stone. he does have a float stone, yeah. Do you think, well, I think the Mew has a free retreat, I oh. think. I'm not sure. Maybe not. I don't know. You might be right. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it does. I think you're right. So he doesn't even need that close. Doesn't even... Oh, that is so cool. So with the Mew, you can Righteous Edge for free oh because of Dimension Valley. So he doesn't even need to put an energy down just to take an energy off of that Lele. I like that move. I do too. So now if Azul wants to continue to hit with this Lele, he has to commit yet another energy. Another energy, it. correct. Because as of right now, it's not really threatening this Mew at all. Correct. I see a Getsis, yes. a couple other, maybe an Ultra Ball in there. There is an Ultra Ball for sure. But the rest of his hand looked like it was items. and I don't know what his yeah. item count's at. Choice Band, VS Seeker. Uh, flash of cards that I didn't get to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens. There's a Stretcher in there. Two Choice Band. Maybe at Jeez, least two Choice It looked like three, actually. It, three. <laughs> it looked like three. I, I think it was three. <laughs> Oh, wow. He does play four, so yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. It's either a Getsis or a Colrest. I think it's a Getsis. So, I wonder if he'll go with that option. He's going to bench Trampa, though. Checking the discards again. 
Got to see the items. Just got to make sure, you know? Because you don't want to... I've had the situation where you go to Trash Lanch for a knockout, and they're like, no, sir, you're 20 short. And I'm just oh, like, man. oh, no. Oh, God, that's like a nightmare. Yeah, it's like a nightmare <laughs> that plays on repeat all yeah. over. <laughs> like, over and over and over. But see, Never they're good players, that. and I'm not. So that's that's probably the the bad. difference here. Dusky structure for a trash lanch. Oh, we do have a, a counter there now. Okay, there are awesome. four items. Well, I would have expected more at this stage of the yeah, game. Yeah, honestly. Honest. But again, these five right there. Yeah, five because he discarded the VS seeker. But I think like because Very these helpful. players are so good, they know how to play it without discarding their items. They know the lines to make. I know, it looks like only two items in discard on Cram's side. Mm, so. That doesn't feel good. No, but it, it does take a knockout here. Correct. Because of weakness. So. And Azul's going to go up by three prize cards. So Cramalot is playing the comeback game Absolutely. Now. And uh, I think... Bram will at least take a knockout here on this trash Lanch doing, I think, 100 damage to it. Or maybe not. Or 200 damage to it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly 200. Seems I good. I think that's enough. Maybe. I mean, no, nah, that's not enough. Maybe he needs more. Maybe just, maybe 50, 50 more would be good. Yeah. I'd like to see a nice 300 damage to that. Yeah, 300 <laughs> damage would be phenomenal. Ooh. He's eyeing up a Lele. I wonder what his idea is. Hmm. He's going to need to take some EX knockouts to catch up. He's Absolutely. not going to win the game by just going for the single prizes. I agree. 100%. And this Garbodor is not really a huge threat to him right now. With only three items in his discard. So possibly he wants to try to take a knockout on an EX this turn. Looks like that Lele grabbed an end, but he's not playing it just yet. And would be a strong play here as well. Azul would only draw three. While Prim's drawing, drawing six. six. Yeah. So that's going to give him a good advantage. I like it. I like the play a lot. The ultimate comeback card. Oh, it is. It is. He's going to probably try to end many Almost, more times. Uh, yeah, probably every, every turn, turn one, probably. Unless yeah. he's going to Guzma or Lysander. Or Lysander, correct. game at this point. I mean, Azul is ahead, but would never count out Bram, Bram Never. Sure. <laughs> never count him out. And anything can happen in Pokemon. Absolutely. Like we said last round, anything can happen. So he's just going to go ahead and take this prize. Yeah, but like I said, one prize a turn is not going to cut it at some point. He'll, he'll need to knock out that Lele. a Lele, a Drampa, Anything really. That's not a basic or a non EX. So I didn't I didn't catch Azul's three cards there. Neither did I, unfortunately. It's four cards. Excuse me. Alright, well there we see like one of blend blend energy? Psychic? It might just be a psychic. Oh. Maybe it might be like one of those oh, it's uh a rainbow. Oh it's rainbow? Okay. Yeah, they they don't Never they mind. actually don't play blend in this one. Blend's a good card, too. I forgot about that card. Wow, I forgot about that card. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Blend energy's really good, too. Yeah. Ooh. Galissapod seems kind of cool with Blend Energies. You can play with Garbodor, because yeah, Grass and Psychic Garbodor. are on the same one. Yeah, the reason it's on my mind is because I know there are some players, it play, they played in the Sableye deck. Oh, okay. That, oh, because it has Dark on it, too. Yes. Holy smokes. Dark, Psychic. <laughs> Fire, I think. Fire, Grass. Fire, yeah. Grass, yep. But rainbow can be any type. Right, of which is also yeah, really good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and it does add that damage, like we mentioned earlier, for Drampa. For Drampa, yep. So it, it's clearly the superior choice in this Oh, matchup. absolutely. Thinking about retreating here. He wants to trash lanch knockout. I think that's very reasonable, safe play. Especially doing it with the Mimikyu. Yeah. Copying trash lanch. Mm -hmm. So that way he's not losing his trash lanch of his own. So that way he'll always have attackers on his bench. Yeah, 
So you have to have the attacker there in order for right, Mew correct. and Mimikyu to actually copy this. Correct. Or at least on the opponent's side. So two Jeez. choice bands coming down, <laughs> followed by an end. Like we said, ending every turn. That's that's kind of what his plan from yeah. now on. Absolutely. What's crazy is the last two turns, Pramalot has attached two items or two tools and end. Yep. He went floatstone, floatstone <laughs> last time, and this time it's choice band, choice band. He did, didn't he? There's so many tools in this deck. I, I like it. I think it's cool. And it, he played those down first because he doesn't want to draw them. Right, because then hand. they're just dead cards, right. He wants to draw other stuff, like more ends. More ends, <laughs> more energies, maybe. After this knockout, if Azul misses an energy, he might be in a little bit of a tough spot. Absolutely. I think Azul can... No, I don't think there's enough items in the discard. I was thinking maybe Azul could trash a Lancha Lele for a knockout, but I don't think so. Not yet. I, I, yeah. see, I think I see only... I think I see only three. Three. I think it's, it's three. It's possible they haven't updated it in a while. Right. There are three Tapu Leles on Pramalot's board, so that's that's scary so if you're Pram. So he basically can't play any items, yeah, he's got to be super scared of that. Correct. Because he really wants Azul to have to knock out two more Pokemon instead of just one. Correct, absolutely. You always want to play what they call the seven prize game, which I guess this deck is really good at, yes, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. this deck would be extremely good at doing that. And they're both doing that already. They've, right. They're doing a very good job of following that play. Plan. Eyeing up a Lele here off an Ultra Ball. And there's no Garbotoxin active, so nothing to stop Azul from. Right. From and I think in this game specifically, I feel like Pram would have been the one to set it up. Yes. After already getting his three Leles out. So. Right. A Garbotoxin w along with these ends mm -hmm. would be really devastating. Would be probably. Devastating. Would allow him to make the comeback a lot uh, easier. <laughs> Azul gets a chorus. I love it. Colorus for 10. I'm really hoping they do like the double high five, but no, I think they're they're more serious right yeah. now because it's too intense for that. Yeah, too yeah, too intense for the uh, for the double high five yeah. fun. We can high five if you want. Yeah. Sweet. Alright. Wonder what he's what Azul's looking for. Maybe some more energies to put down. I yeah. gotta guess. Because I'm pretty sure he's not attached to energy in like two turns. Like, yeah, he wants to finish this game, and he, he needs energy to do it. Yeah, absolutely. He needs it. I Just, feel like if Azul can take a knockout here on this Trash Lanch Garbodor, I don't think Pramwat can do anything. Honestly, he has a Mimikyu on his bench and a Drampa, but that's pretty much it. Azul may have decided that the the item game was kind of over for him at this point. Right. Maybe that's what it is. So he might be a little bit more likely to discard items to thin his deck, so when he gets end again... He's drawing he's good cards draw instead of, right. Because there's a certain point at the game in which you kind of like throw Trash Lynch to the wind. Right, you're just like, alright, it's gonna yeah. knock me on no matter what now. It's, it's over. Right. The time for being conservative is... Is, past. yeah, way past. <laughs> Especially when you're getting up to like the 9 and 10... You're just like, at that point, may as well just throw away all the items, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, I think they've abandoned the counters, too, but it's safe to say that it's... It's probably going to be knockouts on majority of, of them. There's cards and yeah. it's discard. There's got to be a lot of items in there. See, I believe now this puts Azul basically putting... I'm sorry, putting Pramalot on a one-turn clock. It's like, knock out everything on Azul's yeah. bench or lose he must end. He has to end him down to one card. He has to. And Pram knows that. He knows that this game is looking pretty bad. Yeah. Like, he knows that. But the thing that's making me a little scared here is this might end in a tie with only five minutes left. That's what seems like is going to happen. If Pram does not win this game, I don't see them finishing a third game. I feel like Pram is also playing to his time, which... Very like, true. Yeah, good players do. 
Very good so point. So that's why he's ending every turn, doing as much as he can, searching it's and whatnot. It would be very hard to prevent Azul from taking a one prize in I agree. five minutes. <laughs> so that strategy may You know, unless he plays extremely slow, right. you know? <laughs> like, he might get in trouble for it, but he could do it. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't want to uh, break any rules or anything. Yeah, that's but, true. That's true. But time is an important tool. Right, absolutely. So we just have to look at it that way. Like, time is a tool just like any other... Hmm. And I'm sure he's going to do it. If, he, if there's a possibility for him to win the game, he's going to take that. Oh, absolutely. Any way that you can win the game without winning a game, I guess. <laughs> All right, so he does take a prize on that. See, what's interesting here is Azul might not draw any ener yeah, energies. Or, oh, but he looks well, like he got one. he did. He finally found that energy after a couple turns of missing it. Absolutely. Being N to one was the charm, and that's the last prize. Oh, okay, I thought it was a trash no. lunch. It was a mimic yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So unfortunately, I think the this one's gonna over. go to tie. Four minutes. They I mean, play unless. A crazy fast game. Yeah, it could be we insane. We don't know. They're they, gonna try. It's gonna be like tool drop, tool drop, tool drop. You know. They're gonna try to get this. Oh, done. absolutely, okay, absolutely. They're gonna shuffle really fast, and they're gonna set up very fast. Perhaps we won't see as much time with deck searches this game. Yeah, maybe they'll just play as fast as possible. It's yeah, going to be definitely. interesting to see. Uh, both these players are playing phenomenally. They have their outs. They know their lines. I feel like they've tested this deck a lot, and they just know what they have to do in order to win. Like, And I, that goes to the, the deck building and to the playing part of the game I guess. Right. It's interesting. For sure. Um and I, I like how they utilize different strategies, games one and two, because they kind of adapted their plan mm -hmm. based on what was going on during the game. Absolutely. When game one they're taking little knockouts with each little basic that they had. Mm -hmm. Second game, the EXs were attacking or the GXs were attacking. Yeah. It was it was cool to see the difference between the two different game plans and the game styles. That means this deck can probably do anything. Right. Has like every infinite like and ability. I love that in Expanded because Expanded is just so broad. Absolutely. You can run into any deck yep. today. Um, and I guess that's why this deck would be really good to play. Exactly. Because you have, let me see, let me check this list <laughs> one check time. The list. You have an Oracorio, so that beats Night March. Night March. You have Mew, so you can, or um, Mimikyu, so you can copy Turtonators and knock out Turtonators. Yep. That seems kind of cool. Yes. Yeah, that cool. seems really cool. A little cool. bit cool. Uh, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, Necrozma for like every EX and GX deck seems really good. Like, Absolutely. There's just so much versatility with this deck. It's crazy. We're going to head back into the game, I believe, and here. With both players like have set up a Trubbish. I like Trubbish. <laughs> we have only two minutes. <laughs> this is going to be uh, a fun one. But Pram can do it because he, unless Azul misdraws or draws dead, but I see an Ultra Ball, so I don't think this game will... I wonder if they're aware. Oh, I'm sure they are. Time. I'm sure they are. They're, they're both great players. I'm sure they know they what time's looking clue. like. Yeah. So that's a brief and kind of sad turn. No turn one Bridget there. Yeah, no Bridget, no Lele's, yeah. nothing. That's... Just an attached pass. That's pretty brutal. Hmm. See, Azul has a pretty cool turn where he can Lele for Bridget and do all of that. <laughs> but is that a play that he wants to make here? I'm I'm wondering. Hmm. I can't tell what's in his hand because you know he shuffles his hand way too fast. I know it's it's very tough to tell. I think at this point there's no way he just took a minute off the clock yeah, with know, just that <laughs> one shuffle of the hand. Yeah, I mean. A tie's better than a loss, though. Oh, absolutely. So we were talking about before, like, oh, one of them has to lose. This might be their right. only loss of the day, but a, a tie's not really? a loss. Really? A tie's definitely not a loss. It's still a point. Yeah. Interesting. This is going to be so super cool to see, because you never want to see a, a player lose, right? Right. And I guess this is, like, the way to, to never see a player lose. You just draw every ties round. Ties all day. Every round. Mm, yeah, 30 seconds on the clock. Man. I mean, they'll still have their plus three turns, so there could be yeah, there could be a possibility, but 
not very likely. Unless, like we said, Pramalot didn't bridge it. Right. So that could come to bite him later. That's true. If he doesn't draw another basic, um, Azul could win that one. Yeah, absolutely. Azul could draw, like, Floatstone, Choice Ban, mm -hmm. and then Tool Drop to knock out this Oracorio, I think is what is active. Yep. Yeah. He has a couple turns in which he can do that. Right, absolutely. Uh, looks like he... M I, I can't tell. <laughs> I cannot tell at all. He's, like, he's on he's normal players, I can see. In there. Yeah, I do see a double uh, colorless. And apparently not exactly what he wanted, though. And they just... That's going to be a pass. I'm pretty sure they just counted out their turns as well. Yeah, they're yeah, going for they, the tie. They're done. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no donk situation there. Anymore. Yeah, well, that's a good thing, I think. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, really interesting game. There it is. There um, is the zero. I know that lunch break.